Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Listen, I'm Pastor Chips of NC Season Ministries. We're located at 1801 Port Malabar Boulevard, in the beautiful city of Palm Bay, Florida. And we're here to give you another refreshing impartation of God's word. Let's get right into the word tonight. Tonight, we're going to be talking about conversations. Help me say conversations. By definition, I looked up the word conversation in the dictionary. Here's what it says. Interchange of thoughts, interchange of information by spoken words. Help me say interchange. interchange. In other words, I may say something, someone else says something. And we're interchanging our thoughts, we're interchanging information, but we're also speaking words. Help me say speaking words. Speaking Let's get into the word of God tonight. The book of James, chapter 3, beginning at verse 3. And I ask if you would, get your Bibles, get a pencil, piece of paper, pen, write these scriptures down. It is the devil's job to steal the word. Amen? Amen. But the Bible tells us to write the vision, make it plain upon tablets. And then you can go back and study, peruse these words, and find even a deeper understanding of God's word. Help me say conversations. conversations. The book of James, I'm going to be reading from the King James, and Pastor Bridget will be reading from the Living Bible. Here's what verse 3 says from the King James. Behold, we put bits in the horse's mouth that they may Obey us. And we turn about their whole body. Pastor Richard, verse 3, Living Bible, read there. We can make a large horse turn around and go wherever we want by means of a small bit in his mouth. Help me say control. control. Say it again, control. A huge horse, a large horse can be controlled by a very small bit put in his mouth. Let me say that's amazing. Let's go deeper. Verse four, the Bible says, behold, also the ships, which though they be so great and are driven by fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a small, very small hymn, whether so ever the governor listed. Pastor Richard, verse 4 from the Living Bible, read. And a tiny rudder makes a huge ship turn wherever the pilot wants it to go, even though the winds are strong. Help me say that's amazing. I've been on a cruise ship, many cruise ships. Ooh, I tell you, it's amazing what man has created from God. Amen? Amen. But help me say, let's go deeper. Verse 5, here's what the Bible says. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasteth great things. Behold how great a matter a little fire Kindle it. Pastor Bridget, verse 3, verse 5 from the Living Bible. Read there. So also, the tongue is a small thing, but what enormous damage it can do. A great forest can be set on fire by one tiny spark. Help me say the tongue. The tongue. Very small thing. Say small thing. But it can cause enormous damage. Yeah. Am I right? Yeah. Help me say a small tongue. Let's continue on. Verse 6, the Bible says, And the tongue is a fire. Woo. A world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body. And set it on fire the course of nature. And it is set on fire of hell. 
Help me say, oh my. Pastor Bridget, verse 6 from the Living Bible. Listen to, the, listen to this word. And the tongue is a flame of fire. It is full of wickedness Oof. and poisons every part of the body. Oh my. And the tongue is set on fire by hell itself. Oof. And can turn our whole lives into a blazing flame of destruction and disaster. Help me say, do not underestimate your tongue. Amen. The Bible says it's a flame of fire. Ooh. The Bible says that the tongue is full of wickedness and poisons every part of the body. Say, oh my. How many know you can start saying something and if the devil is in it, your whole body will respond. Your blood pressure start rising. Am I talking? Yeah. Help me say, oh my. This tongue needs to be kept under control. Amen? Yeah. Let's go deeper. The Bible says in verse 7, for every kind of beast and of bird and of serpents and of things in the sea is tamed and hath been tamed of mankind. Verse 8, but the tongue can no man tame. Woo. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. Wow. See, that's, that's deep. Say it again, that's deep. Pastor Bridget, verses 7 and 8 from the Living Bible. Listen at this. Men have trained or can train every kind of animal or bird that lives and every kind of reptile and fish. But no human being can tame the tongue. Woo. It is always ready to pour out its deadly poison. Help me say my tongue is always ready. Y'all y'all got to hear what this word is saying tonight. Help me say my tongue is always ready to pour out deadly poison. Ooh, many of us don't realize what we have in our mouth. Help me say deadly poison that can't be tamed. Help me say, oh my. Look at the neighbor. Say, we talking about conversations tonight. Mm -hmm. Let's go a little deeper. And the Bible says this in verse 9. Therewith, bless we God, even the Father, and therewith, curse ye men, which are made after the similitude of God. Pastor Bridget, verse 9, read there. Sometimes... It praises our Heavenly Father. Sometimes. And sometimes it breaks out into curses against men who are made like God. Say, oh my. How many have experienced verse 9? Oh, we don't want to talk now. Well, I raise both of my hands for everybody. Amen. Sometimes my tongue can praise God. And then other times, say other times. It breaks out into curses against men who are made like God. Help me say my tongue. My tongue. Say it again, my tongue. my tongue. Listen, people of God, we got to be honest with ourselves when we see something in this word that letting us know exactly what's in our mouth. Amen. Amen. Can you shout, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Can you shout, thank you, Jesus. Amen. We've got to be honest. Verse 10, the Bible says, out of the same mouth proceeded blessings and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. Say, oh my. Oh my. Pastor Bridget, verse 10 from the Living Bible. And so blessing and cursing 
come pouring out of the same mouth. Oh my. Dear brothers, dear brother, surely this is not right. Help me say it's not right. right. Say it again, it's not right. Can you imagine saying, God, I love you, God, I bless your name. God, I thank you. God, you're worthy. And then somebody cut you off in traffic. (laughs) In that same tongue, say that same tongue that you've been praising God with. You rolling down your window, am I talking? And saying some not so nice things to the person that cut you off. Help me say the the same tongue. Look at your neighbor and say, it cannot be tamed. Say it again, it cannot be tamed. So we've got to realize that it's important what we say. Help me say conversations. Say it again, conversations. Let's go deeper. The book of Matthew chapter 12. Let's go there. Matthew chapter 12, beginning at verse 35. Matthew chapter 12, beginning at verse 35. Here's what Jesus is talking, amen? Here's what Jesus is saying. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things. And an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. Pastor Bridget, verse 35 from the Living Bible. Read there. A good man's speech reveals the rich treasures within him. Mm. An evil hearted man is filled with venom and his speech reveals it. Help me say, when you have God working on the inside, your tongue will reflect the goodness of God. Amen? Amen. But when you have evil, meaning Satan, on the inside, help me say that same tongue. We'll let everybody know who's really controlling you. Amen. It doesn't matter how saved you are. This tongue cannot be tamed. It doesn't matter how saved you are. The tongue will let everybody know who's controlling you at any given time. Can you shout, oh my? Help me say conversations. The most hallelujah saved person in the world. If there's evil in them, the tongue will let you know. Say, oh my. Can you shout, thank you, Lord. Verse 36, Jesus is speaking. But I say unto you, listen at this, every, that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. Pastor Bridget, verse 36 from the Living Bible. And I tell you this, that you must give account on judgment day for every idle word you speak. Help me say idle words. Say it again, idle words. Well, what is an idle word? An idle word is a word or words that God does not approve of. When we live in sin, we are not pleasing God. Sinfulness on the inside of us will cause our tongue to say things that God didn't want you to say. Amen? And therefore, it's considered an idle word or idle words. And God is not pleased with that. And he says that they're coming up again in judgment. Saying, oh my. Verse 37. Jesus is speaking. For by thy words thou shalt be justified. And by thy words... Thou shalt be condemned. Ooh, Pastor Bridget, verse 37, read. Your words now reflect your fate then. Either you will be justified by them or you will be condemned. Help me say my words. My words. 
will let God know if we're on our way to heaven or if we're on our way to hell. Say, oh my. Because this tongue cannot be tamed. Help me say conversations. Let's go deeper. The book of Genesis chapter 3, verse 1. Genesis chapter 3, verse 1. The Bible says, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree in the garden? Question. Say, oh my. Pastor Bridget. The serpent was the craftiest of all the creatures the Lord God had made. So the serpent came to the woman. Really? He asked. None of the fruit in the garden? God says you mustn't eat any of it. How many know that Satan will say the opposite of what God says? Help me say the devil is a liar. Anytime the devil is speaking to you, it's a lie. There's no truth in him. And you know what I found out? That Satan knows the word. And he will mix it up. And if you're really not listening, if you're not in tune with God, Satan will have you questioning what God has said in his word. Help me say conversations. Watch this. Satan said, he said to the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Question mark. Hmm. Let's continue on. Verse 2, the Bible says, And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. Verse 3, But of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden. God has said, ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Mm, say, oh my. oh my. People of God, you've got to be careful how you entertain Satan's questions. Let me help you all. You don't need to answer Satan. Amen? Amen? All you have to do is tell him what the word says. Yes, sir. Isn't that what Jesus did? Yes. Let me help you. Thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. This tongue will say whatever spirit is controlling it. Yes. Amen? So if we have the spirit of God, I want you to hear this. If we have the spirit of God, we need to read this word of God until it becomes just like food for our soul. Yes. That it will rot. Have you ever eaten something and burped and belched? And what was in there came out. We've got to study this word so much that when Satan starts asking us questions, the only thing that comes up is the true and what? In fact, it's the true, authentic word of God. Heaven said, that's the only thing that needs to come up. Say it again, that's the only thing that needs to come up. But what Satan does is he hopes that we haven't been studying. He don't mind you coming to church as long as you in church and your mind is somewhere else. Why is it that for most people they get the best sleep while the word is going on in church? 
That is nothing but a trick of the devil. Amen? Help us say enough is enough. Say it again, enough is enough. Pastor Bridget, verses 2 and 3 from the Living Bible. Listen at this word. Of course we may eat it, the woman told him. It's only the fruit from the tree at the center of the garden that we are not to eat. God says we mustn't eat it or even touch it or we will die. Listen, when you are not fully under the knowledge of the word of God, Satan will make you lie with your tongue even though you're trying to tell the truth. Here's what Eve did. She added something to what God said. Here's what Eve said. But of the fruit of the tree in the midst of the garden, God has said, ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Help me say, Eve added something. God said, don't eat it. He never said you can't touch it. But a lot of us like to be so important to Satan until we start lying about what God said. Help me say conversations. See, Satan is so he Satan listen Satan is a spirit he has been here longer than we've been here he knows over and over generation after generation after generation he knows the word by now so when Satan asks you a question what God is telling me to tell you is make sure that your answer is exactly what God said not trying to add to it to make you look important because it has never been about you when it comes to living holy. Help me say it's all about Jesus. I can't get the glory. God gets the glory. How does God get the glory? By you and I saying exactly what the word says. We are not to add anything to it and we are not to what? Take anything away from it. But Eve, say Eve. Eve. She added to it. Amen? Amen? And now Satan is engaged. Listen, let me help you. The best way to stop Satan in a conversation is right at the beginning. Say right at the beginning. Right at the beginning. When you get that call... And you know it's not a good call. You tell that person right at the beginning. Don't call me no more. Click. Amen. Amen. But some of us like to engage in Satan's conversations. Don't we? Yeah. Don't we? Yeah. Satan is smooth. He knows that if he can get you to answer at least two Questions. He got you. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, neighbor. Hear what God is saying. God is Cut Satan off, Satan off. Immediately. immediately. Do not engage in conversations with the devil. Amen? Because he is too smart. He is too cunning. And how about this? He'll call you at the time that you're at your lowest. Am I talking to anybody? I'm not talking about what I heard. I'm talking about what I know. He will call you at the time if you are married when you are upset with your spouse. Am I talking? Children, he'll call you and engage with you when you are upset with your parents. Amen? In other words, Satan know just when to contact you. Because remember, he's a spirit. Say a spirit. spirit. Say it again, he's a spirit. spirit. Let me help you. 
in verse number one, the Bible talks about now the serpent. But actually, you must understand that Satan was using the serpent. Amen? Yeah. See, Satan is a spirit. He will use anybody that allows him to come in. Am I talking? But once Satan gets in to your spirit, you're no longer talking. Satan is talking. Yeah. Amen? And the only way that you can get rid of Satan is through the word of God. Say the word of God. Word of God. Can you shout yes Lord? Yes Lord. Conversations. Say conversation. conversation. Think about your last five conversations. Think about who you were talking to. Think about how long you talked to whoever it was you were talking to. And ask yourself, was this God approved or was it Satan approved? Because this tongue, say this tongue, this tongue. can say glory, hallelujah. Amen. And this same tongue can what? Say, I'll meet you after church. Uh -huh. Oh, y'all didn't get that one. Help me say this tongue. This tongue. So Satan is saying to us, I know the word of God, but I'm going to twist it in such a way with my question. And if you don't have the knowledge of an answer, then I'm going to go further. Help me say further. further. And we've got to learn that even if we don't know the answer, just cut the conversation off at the beginning. Can you shout? Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Can you shout? Less, yes, Lord. See, let, let, let me go for it. Verse 4, the Bible says, And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. Say, wow. Pastor Bridget, verse 4, the Living Bible, listen at this. That's a lie, the serpent hissed. You'll not die. Die. Wait a minute. God says, if you eat of the fruit, you will die. Satan said, that's a lie. You're not going to die. Say, wow. You see how Satan is? But why is it that we partner up with Satan? This my friend. Okay. Does this friend go to church? No. Are they a Christian? No. But they're your friend. Yes. Help me say that's a problem. So you're entering in conversations with an ungodly person. You cannot maintain your godliness by entertaining what? Ungodliness. Because the ungodliness will what? Get in your spirit. Amen? Amen. Here's what Jesus says. You are my friend if you do what God the Father says. Period. Yes. Some of us need to what? Cut the cords with people that we call our what? Friends. Because we talk to them, don't we talk? So the question is, what are you talking about? Mm. If it's an ungodly conversation, Satan wins. Amen? Amen? Then Satan will cause us to do what he does. Help me say he's a lie. Look at verse 4 from the Living Bible. Satan said, that's a lie. Wow. He's bold, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. he isn't, isn't he bold? And you know what Satan will do? He will cause us to do bold things when we listen to him. Amen? Amen. Can you shout, oh my. oh my? So God is saying to us tonight, watch your conversations. Know who you're talking to. And if that person is an ungodly person and you know that at that point you don't have the wherewithal to lead that person to Christ. Am I talking? Do you need to what? Cut the conversation short. Because the longer you listen to a liar, 
the more your tongue is going to become the liar that you're listening to. Help me say he's been here longer than us. And he knows just what we're looking for. He knows just what we're missing. How many marriages have ended up in divorce because somebody says, what's the matter? You can talk to me. I know what you're going through. I saw you far off. You looked like you were hurting. Let's talk about it. Ah, I know that's your husband calling. Don't pick it up. You can call him back. It's you and I talk. Help me say Satan. Isn't he tricky? Whew. What's your favorite color? <laughs> I like your eyes. You have a beautiful smile. Help me say Satan. Won't he work on you? Ooh, your hands are so soft. Ah, oh, wow. Ooh, what are you doing later on tonight? Help me say Satan. He's talking. He wants you to engage in conversations. But his end result is death. Amen? Amen. You know what Satan will do? Satan will allow us to become what we hate the most. Let me explain that. If you're in a marriage and you hate adultery, you know what Satan will do? Make you become an adulterer. Say, oh my. If you hate lying, you know what Satan will make you do? Become the best liar. Am I talking? Help me say this tongue cannot be tamed. So we need to get to a point that when we know that it's not of God, cut it off. Amen? Amen. Satan will have you dressing one way, going into the school, and changing clothes once you get there to look like hoochie this and hoochie that once you got there. Hello? Won't he do it? Satan will have you coming to church. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But you know what you have in the car when you get out of church. You're going to the club. Amen. Say, oh my. Amen. Satan will have you stopping at the ABC. And what else out there? Mm-hmm. And you're not getting ice. Amen. And he'll have your mind all messed up. It was amazing. I was in line the other day in a, a convenience store. And there was four people in front of me. Three of them had at least six cases of beer in their hands. These are just random people. And I said, wow, is that what it has become? Help me say it's sad. Say it again, it's sad. sad. Listen, God is calling for holiness. God is calling for holiness. Your conversation needs to be seasoned with salt. Your words need to be what? Such as God gets the approval out of your words. Amen? Listen, this is me, this is Pastor Chips. And people at in season ministry know that I'm just real. I used to start arguments with my wife just to get out the house. Say, oh my. Because I had something else that I wanted to do. And I felt that I just couldn't do it if she was happy with me. So I just started the conversation. I just made her mad. Say, made her mad. That's what I did just to get out the house. 
Do you know Satan will make you a liar? Yes, he will. Coming to church every Sunday and living like hell throughout the week. Help me say, God is saying, come out from among them. Be different. Amen. God is calling for us even in this year to be different. Say different. God is calling for us to monitor our conversations. Why is it that certain people call and you want to leave the room when your spouse is there? Help me say, if you got to leave the room, you need to cut that call off. Say, oh my. Because the truth of the matter, your spouse can hear some of those conversations as you walk out the room. Say, oh my. And know that it's on God. You know what happens? Ask me what. What Satan does, he'll cross the line with you. And if you don't put him in check, then every time he calls, then you'll think he's getting ready to cross the line again, and now you're nervous. But God is saying he's calling for holiness. Say holiness. holiness. Say it again, holiness. holiness. In other words, you need to tell the devil no more. Help me say no more. No. Say it again, no more. I will not entertain your conversations anymore. Yeah. Let tonight be the last time. That you have a five minute conversation with the devil. Amen. Because the devil will turn your thoughts. Even before you know it. You lying. Amen. You're lying. You're laughing. You're talking. You're falling. You're out of the will of God. What are you doing? It happens so quick. And many of us. After we finish the conversation. We don't even repent. Because he got us feeling, ooh, boy, that, that was just a funny cover. Ooh, I really needed that. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. What you needed was to what? Call on the name of Jesus. What you needed is to what? Stay in the world. What you needed was to become an intercessor. Because there was somebody that was across the world that needed you to pray right then. But you were entertaining folly. How can God use you if you're allowing the devil to use you? It's either one or the other. Say one or the other. other. Say it again, one or the other. other. Either God is using you and getting the glory or the devil is using you and getting the glory. So God is calling for us to censor our conversations. Amen? Amen? And the next time the devil calls... And he will call. And she will call. Amen? And they will call. Then you let them know, listen, I'm not comfortable with this conversation. God bless you. Click. And more than likely, a bold devil would do what? Call you right back. And now, you can tell them one more time. I said... Not comfortable with this? Click. The third time, say the third time. time. You are blocked. Y'all young people know what blocking is, right? Y'all older people need to find out what blocking is. That means you can block the number. And they can call the number, but it won't ring anymore. Help me say, we need to block some things. We say we love God. We say we're depending on him. We say that we can't live without him. But yet we're spending our time in folly. And our conversations are not pleasing God. But God is saying, come out. Help me say, come out. out. Say it again, "Come come out. And then now we need to find people that love the same God we love. Yes. Amen? Yes. And when they call you, they're saying things like, well, praise the Lord. Well, praise the Lord. Well, you know, God is good. Yes, he is. He's blessed me. Let me tell you about my testimony. A- am I talking? Help me say, that's the people. 
that you want to help me say iron sharpeneth iron. Say it again, iron sharpeneth iron. Because you, you may hide from me, okay? But you can never hide from God. Amen. Amen. What God is saying in this word is every idle word is coming up in judgment. Say, wow. wow. That means God doesn't forget anything. Amen. Amen. He loves us. And because he loves us, he sends his word. Amen. Amen. Somebody holler, thank God for the word. word. Say it again, thank God for the word. Here's what the Bible says. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Here's what the Bible says. Husbands, love your wife as Christ loves the church. Here's what the Bible says. Wife, submit yourself unto your own husband as unto the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife. Help me say the husband is the head. Now, if you don't respect your husband, then you're going to have a problem submitting. Amen. Amen. Now, that's a, a situation where you got to work out with God because two becomes one in the marriage. Look at David say, know who you're marrying. Say it again. Know who you're marrying. And say and. Stop playing games when you're not married. Because Satan is tricky. Won't, won't, won't he have you doing ungodly things and laughing about it? <laughs> Ooh, that was. <laughs> Say, uh uh. God is serious about marriage. Amen? Let me, let me tell you about Satan. I know a young person, they're younger than me. They were hurt in a relationship more than once by a man. And now they have turned to lesbianism because they said that they only found love with another female. Help me say, oh my. Listen, life is about choices. Are you listening? Sometimes we make bad choices. Are you hearing me? But God still has a standard. Amen? Amen? God still has a what? A standard. Here is God's standard. Man that was born a man can only love a woman that was born a woman. And vice versa. If you think that you are a female and experiencing love from another woman... That is an abomination from God. Pastor Chips did not say it. The word of God said. That is sin. Amen. That is sin. If you're confused, that, that's why you need the Holy Ghost. Because God is not the author of confusion. Yeah. If you're confused in your mind as to which way you want to go, that's Satan. Yeah. God will give you clarity. God is saying one way and one way only. Whew. There are a lot of confused people. This is why they keep adding letters to this LGBTRSQ. And they, they just keep adding stuff to it because they're so confused that they're trying to name this and name that. No, God is saying marriage. Two becomes one. He gave us the example in Genesis. Adam was a man. Eve was a woman. They became the first couple. God has not changed his mind. So if you're in lesbianism, if you tried it, etc. so forth, if you're in homosexuality, God said these were ungodly conversations that you entered into with Satan and God is saying that that's a lie. He can deliver you, but you've got to want to be delivered. But that type of behavior will not get you into eternal life with God. 
You can't, you can't, it's, it's sad. You can't even look at TV anymore. Am I talking? Without it being paraded over the airways, be it commercials, be it in sitcoms, they're trying to get you to think that it's all right, but God's word is a standard and it has not changed and it will not change. Holiness is right. Yes. So I plead to you. Oh, yes. I plead to you. Don't let Satan tell you that God's word is a lie. Just like he told Eve. Satan is bold. He will tell you that oh, you don't have to believe that. God loves you. He know your heart. He know your mannerisms as a child. And that's why as a child, my daddy made sure I had Tonka trucks. Y'all hear me? My daddy made sure I had shovels. He told me, boy, go out and dig a hole in the yard. He made sure I worked. He made sure that I understand that there was a difference between a male and a female. And I was going to act like a male and I was going to love a female. But some of our parents are just so understanding. <laughs> no. Help me say no. Parents, we've got to what? Train our children up in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. So they can fear God. They can understand that there's a standard of holiness. One woman, one man. Amen? Amen. And nothing in between. The men need to act like the men. The, the woman need to what? Have the femininity of a woman. I don't want Pastor Bridget all hard up with muscles and everything. No, I want her to be soft. And she is. Whew. You got some women, they look so hard, they like they can push you down. We don't need that. Femininity, amen? Woman needs to be soft. Am I talking? Let me say conversations. conversations. So in, our, in conclusion, the word of God remains the same. The book of James, verse 8, chapter 8, verse 44. Uh, book of John, let's go to John, chapter 8, verse 44. Here's what Jesus said. Ye are of your father, the devil. And the lust of your father, ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in truth. Because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Say, oh my. Pastor Bridget, verse 44 from the Living Bible. Listen at this. For you are the children of your father, the devil, and you love to do the evil things he does. He was a murderer from the beginning Ooh. and a hater of truth. Oh my. There is not an iota of truth in him. Glory. When he lies, it is perfectly normal, for he is the father of liars. Say, oh my. There was a time in my life that lying for me was perfectly normal. I could lie, I could lie, I could lie, and it didn't, didn't even bother me. But I thank God for the word of God that found me and allowed me to understand that I was on my way to hell. <sighs> Jesus is saying that if you have a lying spirit, if your conversations are not conversations, if you're in a marriage and you're entering in conversation with other men or even other women, 
etc. or vice versa. And you know that they're not godly conversation and you're doing it anyway. Jesus is saying, hey, you are of your children. You are of your father, the devil. He's evil. Say evil. And the evil things that the devil does, he will what? Have us doing them also. Amen. The Bible says he was a murderer from the beginning. Ooh, and he hated the truth. When he lies, it is perfectly normal. Have you ever met people that they just lie so smooth? And it's almost like when you, when, you, when you hear them talk, you know they're going to lie. Let me, let me borrow $5. I'll pay you Friday. <laughs> I guess you have to ask them which Friday, right? Because you gave them the $5 and many Fridays have passed and they haven't paid you back. And then when you see them, they say, look, I haven't forgot about you. And I say to myself, I haven't forgot about you either. And then you meet them again, they get an attitude. I told you I was going to pay you. Help me say the devil will keep you lying. Amen. And we don't want that. Surely we don't want it in the house of God. Amen. Amen. And then the people of God, when we leave the house of God, we want to leave with the spirit of God. Amen. Amen. And we don't want to leave the house of God and then get into a lying conversation. <sighs> Am I talking? If you're not married, you don't need to be staying in the house with anybody that's not married. Amen. Amen. God says, let every man have his own wife. Am I talking? Ooh, can you shout glory? But Satan will tell you what? It's all right. They understand it's a financial thing. But God is saying, I never approved it. Amen? Amen. Can you shout glory? glory? So the people of God have to do it God's way. Amen? Amen? And when we do it God's way, he will say, well done. Thy good and faithful servant, you've been faithful over a few things. Then I'll, I can make you what? Ruler over many. That's what God wants. Clap your hand and give him glory. <laughs> Trust me, people of God. I want you to hear this. Satan will not stop talking to you. He will come in your mind. Am I, are you listening? He will come in your thoughts. He will come as a person. He will disguise himself as an angel of light. In Genesis chapter 3, we saw him use a serpent. Satan can use whatever he wants to get your attention. Amen? Amen? But we have to get to a point where we say enough is enough. And we have to cut Satan's conversation short. Amen? Amen? And tell that liar, tell that demon, no more. Help me say no more. No more. Say it again, no more. no more. So if you've heard this word, listen, God is just a prayer way. If you're a sinner, and you've been hurt in relationships, whew, my God. If you've been hurt in relationships, somebody lied to you. They told you that they loved you. They told you they'll be there for you. And they've lied. They've left you. God is saying he'll never leave you nor forsake you. You have to give Satan back all of his tools and surrender all to Jesus. Repeat after me, Lord, I am a sinner. I acknowledge that Jesus Christ died for my sins. Jesus, come into my heart. Clean me up. Make me new. Turn my darkness into light. Fill me with your Holy Ghost. And I will love you. I will serve you. I will practice repentance when I fall short so that you can restore me.
back to fellowship with you. In Jesus' name, I ask. Amen. If you said that simple prayer, it doesn't matter what situation you were in just a moment ago. If you have asked Christ into your life, your darkness has become light. Now you have to do something. You're going to have to look around at your surroundings. You got to ask yourself, is there anyone in my surroundings? That will cause me to go back into darkness. And now you have to tell God, God, I want to serve you. Free me of this. Hey, Pasha. And God will get the glory and you can start living holy. You can start living a life and a lifestyle that's pleasing to him. Even if somebody doesn't tell you, you look good. You can tell yourself, thank God. Listen, look at Pastor Chips. I don't have much to work with, but I try my best to keep it in order. Amen? You need to do the same thing. Am I talking? You need to love yourself. Amen? You need to love the God that's in you and make it your business to present yourself a living sacrifice unto God. You need to have clean hands. And a pure heart. If you do that, God will get the glory. Here's what I ask. I ask that two things. First of all, you got to get into the word of God. If you don't know where to go, go to the book of Proverbs that corresponds with the day of the month. For example, if this was the first of the month, read Proverbs chapter 1. And each day, keep reading that proverb that corresponds with the date every month throughout the year. That's going to bless you. The second thing Pastor Chips asks of you to join a Bible based, Bible believing, Bible teaching ministry where the leadership is living holy. Join that ministry so that you can get even more of God's word. And remember, when it comes to conversations, if they are not of God, cut them off right at the beginning. Amen. Amen. I love you. This is Pastor Chips of Business Season Ministries. Located at 1801 Port Malabar Boulevard, in the beautiful city of Palm Bay, Florida. Pray with us. Pray for us that God will get the glory out of this ministry. We ask that in Jesus' name. Amen.